Hi people, it's Martin here. Um, <coughs> thanks for watching. I, it's a bit a little bit disconcerting recording on this laptop because um, my mouth, as I look at the screen, is moving about a second later from what I'm actually saying. So I will look at the camera and maybe that will uh, help. So I hope everyone is doing well and the normal uh, stuff. So I've had a good, a good, lots of different things going on actually in the wacky world of uh, music. I've been to a couple of gigs, so I think I'll start with that and then work my way through different stuff dotted around on the floor here for me to talk about. So um, we had a local uh, um, band here play called, uh, I've put it in my um, blue album here, The Dung Beatles. Uh, so I went to see this last night for my um, wife's birthday. Uh, unfortunately, the venue that was, it was going to be at, uh, which was actually in like the high street where I live, um, it closed. It was closed during lockdown. They were waiting to open. So off to a bad start there already. Um, and... Yeah, I think they've had a lot of problems there and the town centre where I live, it, it needs a lot of regeneration. It needs probably cheaper rent, all sorts of other political shenanigans going on, I'm sure there, but I don't know about anyway. So I went to see a cover version band and they were really good, actually. They didn't do all the usual Beatles um, hits. They did, um, you know, the bit at the end of... Um, Abbey Road, they did some solo stuff by every uh, member. They did um, Maxwell Silver Hammer. They did, um, oh, what else? A lot. Yeah, so that was that was one gig. So that's that. And it was, it was a 10 quid, which cannot be complained about. Now, um, about 30 years ago, cast your mind back, um, me and a mate were going to see, or this is how he tells the story because I couldn't actually remember. We were going to London, or rather we went to London. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, it was the borderline. And we were going to see this band called The Primitives, obviously famous for uh, Crash, now been in every uh, rom-com film, soundtrack and other things possible, you know, used in, um, well, not on Top Gear, but that sort of stuff anyway. So... They've been touring probably now, again, for probably, I don't know, three, four years? I'm not sure, really. They've been sporadically back together anyway through through ten years, I suppose, because I wasn't aware that one of the band had died and then they'd split. Um, and I think also at that time they were dropped. Um, um, and... Yeah, so I didn't get to see them. <coughs> anyway, I got to see them. So I went to see them and um, it was a good gig. Yeah, good little gig near Milton Keynes. And um, at the end, I embarrassed myself. Tracy, or Tracy Tracy as she's called, was um, there um, afterwards. So I went armed with my records. I'd taken three to get signed. Now, this guy here, apparently... He's in the band now, and I have to say, if you're in the VC, um, uh, and you know a guy called Stunty, he looks a bit like a, dish a more dishevelled version of Stunty. Um, anyway, apparently, this guy, Paul Sampson, he actually, um, I, I, I made the mis this was mistake number one, I made the mistake of saying, um, uh, were you on these albums? Because I wasn't entirely sure. Anyway, it actually turns out that, um, not that one, but the first two albums, this one, he actually produced as well. He wasn't just in the band. So uh, he very kindly did sign uh, sign them. Or well, certainly this one he did. And uh, yeah, that one she's put to Martin. Uh yeah, so that was number one, putting my foot in it. The second part was I said to her, so what is it if you cast your mind, minds back to the 1980s? You had these Pepe key rings. 
sort of like a, a, a sort of a hook type thing like that uh, with Pepe written on it and you have Pepe jeans. So in this song that they have a lyric, um, they have a lyric, look so cool in his Pepe socks. Uh, I forget the name of a song. I think it was on the first album. Uh, it might have been Stop Killing Me. Anyway, she told me 30 years later, it wasn't Pepe socks. It was actually purple socks. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so that was second uh, good gig. Now, for those of you hipsters and people under 30... Um, I'm only showing this album just so I remember. So this is an album by uh, The Streets. Um, it's irrelevant which one it is. Anyway, there's sort of this guy who I haven't heard anyone or very rarely talk about on the internet at all. And he's called Ren, R-E-N. And he's from, uh, I think he's possibly from Wales. Anyway, a lot of his videos have been shot... Uh, in, in Blackpool, possibly Brighton, and he's really big. So I would advise you go and um, check him out. I'm showing the streets because it's about as similar as I think you could probably get. It's very lyrical poetry with beats or, or um, songs um, known to you and me over the top of them. So he's done a, one with Bittersweet Symphony and he's done one with Right Here, Right Now, Fatboy Slim. Um... Yeah, very interesting artist, whether you like it or not. I would advise you uh, check it out. Don't bother with this bloke anymore. He's, I don't think he's quite so what he was a, a years ago. Anyway, a couple of things I've been listening to now. Um, uh, church album is going to take a while to get into. Here it is. And uh, I was listening to this. This is a weird one. Uh, this is... Um, it's a uh, advertising tool for LBC radio. No, sorry, Radio Luxembourg two hundred eight, and it's sort of like a radio play, and it's got Ray Brooks in it. Um, uh, some of the music is done by Jeff Wayne. Yeah, it's totally bizarre but interesting to listen to. Nevertheless, uh, a timepiece of the nineteen seventies. Uh, yeah, sort of like a play. Someone in their office, and um, yeah, interesting. Anyway. Right, okay, and because I'm I'm always looking for samples and things, then I think I had that in mind. Talking of samples, very briefly, when on my stream, hopefully soon, my new collaboration thing comes up. Uh, whether I give some away, I, d I don't really know. You know, I'm not I'm not sure. But the arty piece that I sell or will be sold on. Um, uh, <coughs> Bandcamp will look like this. So I've taken an old uh, 10 inch lingual phone record and because it's the theme is about Spain and this is what it's called Spanish Rhapsody for Guitar and Plunderphonics. Um, yeah, uh, well that is that, yeah. So, so I haven't quite um, finished it yet because it's a bit of an art project. That isn't in any way to sell it here. I suppose it's just to make you aware and it would be nice if you could um, watch it and like it or I'm pretty sure there'll be comments and it won't get blocked or anything. Anyway, on, onwards and upwards. That's eight, nine minutes nearly gone. So uh, what should we talk about next? OK, a, a, a genuine vinyl find from my local Oxfam. Florence Foster Jenkins on vinyl was, I don't know, two, three pounds, I think. So this is truly terrible record and hilarious and the film is pretty good too with um Meryl Streep Hugh Grant in it yeah a genuine person a, a socialite um who was um much ridiculed apparently back in her day if you don't know it check it out uh, next thing um my my um record cleaning machine is in for repair my mini disc, uh, I went to put in a mini disc. I hadn't done, played anything. It was at my mum's house for like 10, 15 years. I went to put in the mini disc of uh, this and uh, I couldn't get it out. So I'm hoping it's a simple repair. The cassette player that I have or had had 
is um is gone it's just yeah i think it must have been the motor on it or something and then they can't fix it i don't think so whatever you know i don't have a huge amount of tapes anyway so i'll um pick one up when i need to uh and while i was there i grabbed a couple of albums from bad bargains bin uh, i've got an album for two pounds here a doobie brothers album appeared pretty clean don't know anything by them at all if i don't like it i'll i'll, sh I'll move it on i'll shift it and this i have this really weird feeling that i might have sold this to them uh, but it's a bit more relevant now. Uh, I think it was a record store day one, maybe. I'm not sure. So it's uh, John Robb interviewing uh, Mark Lanigan, who is no longer with us. Uh, it was a pound, remarkably. Uh, so just an interview in England. Uh, where are we? West Yorkshire, Hebden Bridge, for Trades Club, January 24th, 2015. As, oh, as part of Heavenly Recordings, 25th, anniversary weekend so there you have it i will give that a listen to again lanagan yeah no longer with us been gone a few years now um yeah onwards and upwards uh, vclt next uh nick nick in um well he's up, up there in northamptonshire somewhere thank you very much nick for um all four copies of um do it yourself so i'm going to keep one of them uh, i think i paired a nice cover up with a nice um pressing british i believe you're collecting all of them um that's another one there this was british pressing in a portuguese sleeve yeah apparently there's 30 40 of these i was not aware of the phenomenon of people collecting all the different pressings or certainly with this they're different i suppose that's sort of interesting um yeah thank you very much nick yeah he put something else in there as well um um yeah i'm just trying to think of your your name on um youtube now it's completely gone a blank now nick um yeah anyway you, you'll know him if you know him anyway uh some more vclt i asked uh when John at Baggy Hi-Fi showed this and talked about it. I think he'd found some records in his, um, in a shed or in a loft or something. Anyway, he didn't want this, so I think he found it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he found it pretentious and slightly irritating. So this is um, a band called King Missile. It's got the press release in there as well. I have this on tape. I don't think I've ever had it on record. So John, thank you very much 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 well received and um i shall be playing this um the boy who ate lasagna and could jump over a church yeah scotland to walk amongst the pigs dinosaurs it's random it's a random sort of uh, person i'd be more worried if the singer hadn't taken drugs with his uh, approach to songwriting i may be wrong most famous king missile They've done a song called Jesus Was Way Cool. And they did another song called Detachable Penis, which is, uh, I was going to say uncomfortable listening, but anyway. Okay, uh, <clears throat> now, country music. Uh, did find a few weeks ago Dean Martin country album, and it wasn't very country. Uh, I found a CD. I suppose to make a bit of a point. Um, I find it really hit and miss country music um and it's not even a question of just liking the cool stuff it's yeah sure i like a bit of depressing sort of uh midlife crisis sort of um people fall into pieces and whatnot but um yeah i don't know there seems to be it seems to be i like the more basic production sort of country music uh i did find this album i haven't played it yet I'll give that a go look quite cool Tex Ritter I know nothing about him at all um, this is actually might well suit me it has a or some religious themes on it uh, yeah looks like he's written some of the songs some of them he hasn't so that is uh, country music covered I've done 
this I've done that um, yeah another find from actually an antique shop um, a Vangelis album I didn't have it appeals because it's Antarctica so I don't know is it gonna be like some wind cold wind blowing or something I'm not I'm not sure but I thought I would give this a go it was about three pounds or something so um, yeah South Pole Antarctica penguins and and um, yeah that kind of stuff hmm it sort of made me think a lot about uh, the quality control of of artists that have done a lot of sort of stuff um, and found this for 25p or whatever it was now Jean-Michel Jarre has done some awesome groundbreaking electronic pop music now when I play this in the car uh, yeah out of context things like Oxygen, Equinox they still sound pretty good but I think I prefer them in the whole album there are some tracks on here I'm sorry to say that do slightly remind me of daytime TV quiz shows certainly in the UK probably probably in America as well anyway I will leave it at that and let you ponder on that um, thought yeah <coughs> there was certainly a time when I nearly went to see him live once when he did that one at the end of the 80s up in um, Docklands for free and for some reason I didn't go so apologies to Philip Barnes who I was at school with then why I didn't go I can't remember maybe I was doing my homework or something I don't know anyway uh, done that done that I think the only other thing I need to talk about uh, was uh, I've done a few record fairs and with with varying success I would say so I did Reading on uh, Springbank holiday the Monday after um, uh, well, at the end of May, sorry. Yeah, the other one at the end of May. And uh, that was pretty successful. Most of the stuff I sold was probably to other dealers, I would say. Um, yeah, it was it was um, pretty busy, got there very early. It's the last one that they were doing in this uh, horrible sports hall with a uh, horrible car park. And um, yeah, they're moving it somewhere else. Uh, yeah, so I felt I, I was busy, obviously guarding my stall the whole day on my own. Um, so I didn't really have a chance to um, disappear much, although I got caught uh, once. And I met the uh, the uh, how, how would I describe him? Um, Chatterbox, I think I would describe him. Lovely Harris Pilton, I met. And we had a, a, a chat, or he chatted more than me, I suppose. A wonderful guy, very uh, genuine, um, maybe slightly misunderstood by some of our American comrades, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, really knowledgeable and uh, just funny, you know, likes his football as well. And uh, yeah, real wide uh, musical knowledge. Yeah, he, he's he's real. He is real, folks. He's under that baseball cap, but he is totally real. And uh, it was great to meet you, Harris. And uh, yeah, here's some of my findings. Uh, uh, I bought this for the cover, 50p. Apparently very common record in Scotland. Uh, I'm presuming that this guy here is blind. Yeah, so do count your blessings, basically. That was 50p. I did have some singles as well. Um, but uh, they're somewhere else away. Uh, I bought, uh, this was uh, 60p, no idea what that is, but it's on um, Harmonia Mundi, classical. Uh, I bought, uh, well that's sort of it, I think, was it? Oh, no. I bought four albums for a tenner, I think. It was just a stall a little bit down from me and um, I'm not sure I'm that keen on any of them really. It was worth a punt. So there's this one here, David Sanctius and Tone True Stories. 
part of the fun really isn't it uh, this is Betty Lou Mills I have a single by her that's quite funky believe it or not uh, I think she was um, obviously Christian but sort of like associated with um, being on BBC and stuff quite a bit you know when you could talk about that sort of stuff without being uh, um, cancelled that's Betty Lou Mills and we have another religious one uh, this is called Rock if you obviously know this is uh, uh, a musical based on the life of uh, Peter Saint Peter so Rock Cephas was his uh, his uh, name in Greek yeah that's that one and one more uh, this is this just grabbed me the cover is Eric Gale mul multipl multiplication and this is um, uh, the first track was really good oh Mary don't you weep apart from that it seemed to drift off a little bit into easy listening jazz funk sort of thing not really my sort of thing anyway I think I've gone on far uh, longer than I expected to there I'm sorry about that uh, whether or not my next video will be uh, my music or just something else I've considered doing some videos uh, about a few different things um, overrated CD uh, overrated albums underrated albums yeah there's a few things pinging around the VC and uh, uh, the internet and um, well, I hope that was interesting for you. As you can see up here, I haven't got any speaker wire yet, but I've put my uh, other amp and um, CD player, multi-play, five, six spinning uh, CD player here. So as I said, the mini disc is in repair, the record cleaning machine is in repair, the cassette tape deck, um, it looks like it's, uh, it's curtains for that, I'm afraid. So thanks very much for watching. Um, thanks again to uh, John and Nick for the uh, for the VCLT. That was muchly appreciated. Uh, cheered me up a bit. I'm suffering with hay fever, and I just want to stay in all the time at the moment. It's quite um, yeah. It's not nice really. For what can you do, eh? Yeah. So yeah. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will catch you in your videos. Toodaloo.